Well, I have a project called Teaching Freedom, which ultimately is seeking to completely transform the education system as we know it. And in terms of the environmental impact and sustainability, for me the most important thing necessary is to have the education system interacting with that so our young children grow up not being told about the environment, not being told what they must do, but really feeling it and living it so that they grow up appreciating the world that we live in from a place that they've experienced it. Now many of our children are of course inner city children and they never get out into the countryside. So what we look to do with them is to take them there in their minds and teaching freedom is about setting the children free to think and the teachers free to really be creative. So if I want to take them into a jungle to teach them about the problems that the gorillas are facing in deforestation or desertification, then I would like to write a check, take them out there and have the children physically experience what it is to be in a rainforest and what it is to have the desert come in and physically see it, experience it and, and understand it. But we can't do that for all the you know, obvious logistical reasons. What we can do is I can say, close your eyes. And with the little children, they're already there. I say, close your eyes. And you're in a rainforest. And it's like this. And we get to describe the scene for them. So they get their own experience of what it's like to be in this wonderful, magical place. And they could be a gorilla. They could be an ant, a snake. They could be a person. Whatever's most appropriate for the particular story. And what they do is they then have an understanding and appreciation of a home being the jungle. And then we, in, then we can introduce what it's like to be captured and put in a zoo, or what it's like to have your home lost, or your mother or a family relative captured or shot by poachers, or whatever the, the learning situation happens to be the key learning points. And we can take that and then the children understand the emotions that go with that, and we're not telling them. This is a bad thing that's happening. We're just explaining what's happening. So they learn it for themselves, and so they care. And then when they write about it, they might write some poetry, or they might draw, or they might write some sort of form of creative writing or a piece of work, or a journalistic approach. When they do that, they're doing it with all the feeling and the passion and, uh, and their experience as though they've been there. So it's much, much more powerful. I've trained 200 teachers in Leeds and that's about five and a half thousand children that we have impacted and, and helped to transform the learning experience. Currently we're looking to do one more year in Leeds with another hundred teachers, another sort of two and a half thousand children approximately, three thousand children, get university audited so it's been studied, we have an understanding, we have a scientific evidence of what's been taking place so that we can then prove why what we do works. Because although it's blindingly obvious to anybody who's looking in, happy teachers, happy children, respected teachers, respected children, leads to much, much better results. What we can see is we will then have the academic, scientific validation. So we can say this is why our process works. So that by summer 2007, we can launch officially the Teaching Freedom Project on the internet so that all people with internet access can see how we do what we do, why we do it and what it looks like so that every single person in the world with internet access can understand or can appreciate what we do so they can all use it. What Teaching Freedom offers is a medium to communicate. So it doesn't matter who I'm communicating to or what I'm communicating. So we could be a religious school, it could be a business. It's how do I get this across in such a way that you, the listener, really gets it and understands it. And if we take climate change as probably one of the biggest global issues we have, but you could throw in that overpopulation, starvation, desertification, deforestation, uh, oil scarcity, renewable resources. You know, all of these are big, big issues facing our children's generation. The current school system and education systems we have in the world have created this problem. So we know that the current system is not the answer to putting it right. So for me, the children we need to educate are the very young ones. I mean, by all means, start with the adults right now and the adolescents right now, but fundamentally, it's a bit late for them. Our children, currently our young children, will be the generation who in 20 years' time will be faced with the mess that, or the situation that will be there. So to give these children a real understanding and awareness of ecology, of physics, of science, of, of humanity, of the feelings that go with that, as they're growing up, and then have the science lessons teach them about thermodynamics, teach them about all of the various issues 
so that they can go into medicine, that they can go into the arts, they can go into the things which really make a difference to engineering, to the science, to make us more sustainable, to help us actually understand what's going on. If we can get the young children really enthralled and knowledgeable about these key issues, by the time they get to the 20s and to the 30s, they will have the self-belief, they'll have the confidence that they can make a change, they'll have the determination to come out and make a change, rather than the apathetic children that we're turning out at the moment. And so I see what we do with Teaching Freedom as a part, I think probably a very significant part, but a part, a catalyst, to really making a big difference on the wider scale and on the bigger picture.